Thank you so much. Nous restons dans l'innovation et le sens apporte le sens pour. We remain with an innovation and meaningful innovation, uh, something that would help all humankind. Cédric, you're going to tell us about a new innovation. Yes, quite so. The world will be an intersection between a technology that was virtually unknown 50 years ago in social tech, blockchain, security, identity, governance. Blockchain was mentioned a lot uh, last year, not here, but at Dauphin University. This is a technology that we thought would have an impact in finances. It came through Bitcoin and other digital technology. Then we started having uh, legal uh, applications and up to identity. One striking winning project is BitNation. It's BitNation Refugee Emergency Response. Let us have a look at the video. BitNation Refugee Emergency Response offers an official identity to refugees through blockchain beyond a state's citizenship. This identity is validated by the members of his or her family to create a web of trust. Refugees can also get a Bitcoin payment card that doesn't require a bank account. BitNation wants to give people paperless citizenship and certify institutions like marriage and birth. A web of trust that takes on part of the role of the state Bit Nation, a new digital state? Alors, Bit Nation est un projet plus large, mais ce projet-là en particulier. It's a larger project, uh, Bit Nation, but this particular project may have a lot of impact. In order to understand the possible impact, let's listen to Jean-Philippe Arborot. He heads Le Point Communication, Jean-Philippe Barbero. Welcome. This is the intersection where you can stand with me. Come on, stand up. <laughs> We're at the intersection of technologies, of trends such as social tech, and we know that we're facing something that will have an immediate positive impact and a sustainable one. So why do you wish to support this project? Well, thank you. I should like to thank NetExpo for giving me the opportunity to speak on my behalf and on behalf of Le Point Communication. I'll be brief. We have to be. So there are three strong points that led me to defend this initiative. First of all, digital identity, which is becoming a universal topic. Then aid to refugees, which is a key question. And number three, the blockchain structure. The third strong point, the possibility of having the ability to pay without a bank account. This is, again, a crucial element. This is election period in France, and very often you have to arbitrate between what you uh, consider is useful vote as opposed to what you really want to vote for. And in this case, uh, you have both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please sit down. And what makes it tick, please welcome on stage Amin Rafi, who's co-founder of the project and project builder at BitNation. And Pierre Balofet from HEC Montréal. Okay, we're going to be able to. Do you have notes? You can keep them if you want. No? So, on va passer du français à l'anglais. We're going to switch from English to French, uh, parce qu'on a un, France, un francophone, un anglophone. Et un, un... We'll switch from English to French and vice versa because of the French speaker and the English speaker. But maybe, and this is possibly the hardest thing to do on a stage. For those of you in the audience who have no idea what blockchain is, can you sum up what blockchain does in 30 seconds? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, you got to look at blockchain as a registry that's distributed amongst the people that hold the network. Um, so if you look at it as a typical standard bank account, for example, the bank holds the ledger that accounts for your money on that. Um, if something should go wrong with the bank's database, 
um, or something goes wrong with the servers, um, they lose all the data. So what blockchain does is says, all right, instead of having it in one place, why don't we distribute this among the people that hold the network active? And by doing so, you distribute the data. And at that moment, it becomes extremely difficult to tamper with the data because everyone holds a copy of it. Um, because if I was to tell one person, hold on, let me edit my account and change my balance to a million dollars, there'll be hundreds of thousands of people saying, no, that's incorrect. Uh, we all have a copy of this, and we don't believe that's true. And the other benefit is that you can't attack the network. Um, all you can do is attack individuals, and by doing so, um, you increase security, immutability, and efficiency to levels that we haven't had yet. That's very good. I, I can never do that. It's so hard. Um, People say that blockchain is to data what TCP IP was to networking. TCP IP is the protocol that makes the internet work, which is it distributes data, ensures that it's sort of safe, can sometimes encrypt, and, and is a distributed system, so you can attack any one node, but it, it will not jeopardize the system. Same thing? Similar. Similar okay. in its own way. So um, we already heard of BitNation last year, which is this digital nation that exists only in the ether, uh, what we're showing here is actually an, an application, uh, specifically for refugees. How can blockchain help give an idea, identification to, to refugees, uh, both current refugees and future climate refugees, and, and victims of human trafficking, for example? Okay, um, so traditional methods require to go through states. So as a refugee, the may not have papers, well in most cases they don't have papers. Um, what happens is they enter a state and the state needs to validate them as an individual that belongs to that state, which requires them to have an identification. Um, but this doesn't look at it as a global perspective because you know, if you're a victim of, let's say, future climate uh, refugees or environmental refugees, these are huge, huge things that people haven't considered yet. I mean, um, what we have now is, and we consider as refugees is nothing compared to environmental refugees that may come through natural causes, environmental changes or global warming. Um, so what we do is, you know, in the similar manner that I explained with uh, keeping a registry that's immutable, accessible to anyone from anywhere in the world without authentication. Um, this means that any person with just a simple internet connection can validate a ID, um, they can register themselves there, and other people that participate in the network, let's say friends and family in this instance, can uh, validate the person as being that. This means they can be anywhere on the planet, and as long as there's a valid internet connection, they can do this. But with our identification, you can even do this offline, um, which no state ID can do. So even if you're offline, um, because due to the cryptographic uh, nature of the identification, you can validate the person's um, digital signature against their public key. But I'm guessing that you could today already do that by tapping into a, you know, whichever national ID data database that, ex that exists. Using the blockchains mean what, means what? Means that you can, it, you can remedy and break down an infrastructure in a country? Um, it means that you don't need to go through a state. Um, you know, a lot of people are in a queue waiting to be accepted. And during this process, without an identification, you can't have a bank account, you can't have an ID. Um, I mean, these are people that everything has been removed from them. And to give them these simple tools allows them to have, you know, regain some sort of a dignity that has been lost throughout the way. Uh, BitNation can also provide many other thing, uh, things like decentralized maps or path to safety. What kind of breadth of services do you think it can offer? Okay. Um, the best example I can give is if you compare this to the traditional centralized services. So if you go through the, you know, an organization um, that participates with the government or partners with the government. And what happens if there's, there's issues, it takes a lot of time. If you make this uh, open to the public, if you decentralize this matter, suddenly you have you know, speeds of update that you haven't seen before. So we partnered up with, with an organization as well that produced maps and automatically uh, mapped out places that there were landmines um, throughout world wars that have been placed there and kind of forgotten about. So informing refugees instantly, oh, do not go through these paths, there are landmines here. Um, we also provided them with locations where they can go and learn about Bitcoin because, you know, um, 
one of the most important things to them would be able to purchase food, to be able to purchase clothing, purchase whatever it is that they may need. And giving them these Bitcoin embassy locations, ATMs, um, they can go and learn about Bitcoin. They can transfer their money from their home country to um, anywhere in the world again. Um, you know, th these are concepts that haven't been thought about. You know, you can transfer money anywhere in the world um, without paying the hefty fees and without any sort of identification. You know, all you need is your Bitcoin address, similar to an email address. If you can create an email address, you can create a Bitcoin address. Um, that means they can create uh, the address, get the money, um, swap it for gift, ca gift cards, purchase things online, or even swap it for cash and, you know, do things that they wouldn't have otherwise been able to do. And these have huge, huge um, impacts on, you know, the, the weight that First of all, the state has to carry. So in a way, you're removing a lot of work that the state has to do. Um, and in another way, you're empowering the individuals that have lost so many things along the way and giving them a, you know, a tool that they can use anywhere. Uh, I know we have a video that sort of sums up many, many of the things that the system does. Can we run the video? On peut passer la vidéo? Eric Vollstedt has big plans. He's a business administration student and an ambassador, representing a state that exists only on the internet. BitNation wants to see international borders dissolved, together with governments. All basic needs are covered by private parties and organized along market economy lines. The hope is that one day BitNation will make traditional nation states redundant. The main idea is that everyone has a say and ideas. Everyone can introduce their own initiatives. Plus, every member of BitNation has the option to advertise their ideas. BitNation went online in late 2014 and currently has a population of 1,500. Anyone can become a citizen. And all the necessary papers are also provided. The Pangea platform allows residents to order passports and property deeds. You can even get married. Your digital marriage certificate is completely independent from any nation state. The idea as such is not a new one. People have been founding virtual states ever since the internet took off in the mid-1990s, from the Umaguma commune to the kingdom of Pottyland. Each state has its own culture and form of rule. For now it's more like a role-playing game, but one that Erik Vollstedt wants to see become reality. You're forced to accept your geographical circumstances according to where you're born, and you can't decide for yourself which state services you would like to use without having to emigrate. With BitNation, the fact that we have competition in the future means we'll need a good reputation to survive. It's about customer satisfaction. In BitNation, residents can join forces to create different kinds of nations, each with its own laws. You can choose to live in a monarchy or a dictatorship. Blockchain serves as a kind of authority. All interactions between citizens are stored in an encrypted text file, and each individual is identified by a unique code. Blockchain also ensures that contracts are complied with. Payment comes in the shape of, you guessed it, virtual currencies such as bitcoins. Political scientist Gerald Fricke has been conducting research into these new web societies. It's an evolutionary process, a transformation from mass society to web society. And eventually, we may see the end of states. They're not required by the Bible or our Constitution. God never insisted that everything had to be organized this way in our global system, in nation states. The current concept of BitNation is oriented purely as a market economy. On the downside, environmental standards and social conditions could suffer. Minorities would likewise be at a disadvantage. And even law enforcement would be dependent on private sector providers. I don't want corrupt cowboys protecting me or citizen militias, nor do I want to see the state monopoly on violence privatized. That would be scary. But there are a range of conventions and breaches of rules that society can't take care of on its own. You don't need rules and regulations for everything. Erik Vollstedt wants to see BitNation evolve further and make the virtual state a genuine alternative. The goal now is to match the usership of Facebook, 
and then become a digital global power. It, re it really feels like we're, we're facing sort of a, a silent revolution, but th the impact of it, we, we can't really fathom right now. Of course. Um, just something to note, that video was done a while back and it said 1,000 users. So we've exceeded 6,000 users on every single uh, continent on the planet apart from Antarctica. And what's really interesting is the ideas that people, you know, come from uh, countries where they have cropped governments, well, most governments. Anyways, I won't get into that. But, um, and what they want to see is uh, their freedom return to them. You know, they, they, they're, they're tired of the old uh, government that's in place and, you know, the continuation of such a, such a power. I mean, even in most modern Western countries, um, we see the selection between two or three different individuals. And, you know, it, it doesn't make sense for millions and millions of people to adhere to, you know, um, to the same rules of every other, other person in, uh, around them. And technology has allowed us to retain individuality to people, as well as empowering collectivism. And this is a very, very important thing to note, where in the past, you know, it would have had to be custom tailored for every in single individual, and it would have been extremely expensive and um, inefficient. But now, due to the enable, um, enable technology, we can empower individuals to select their own uh, jurisdiction, to allow them to produce their own sort of uh, living standards. And if anyone wants to question this, and this is something that not many people know, and they're like, oh, I don't know if this will work, all you have to look at is Switzerland. And if you think Switzerland is not a good country, then you should look into it further, but I'm sure everyone can agree they are doing extremely well. And one thing people may not know is that Switzerland is decentralized. You know, it consists of separate states that um, go under the same country, but each state has a sort of autonomy on what they need to do. And when you look at uh, European countries, for example, this becomes very, very evident where northern parts of the country, even in France, have a set of different standards of living and understanding of how things should be compared to the southern part. Um, it's not to say we should break up the country, it's, you know, they can all be under France, but why not allow them to empower themselves um, based on what they believe to be true. Um, Pierre Balofay, j'en viens à vous. Oui. Uh, on voit bien que... Mm, Pierre Balofay, this is a citizen's initiative, obviously, which is very topical and it challenges deeply some things that we thought were very fundamental elements of society. Yes, I think that BitNation is quite an example of that. In Quebec, we have an idiom when we talk about creativity, when we talk about some disruptive or some subversive activities, <clears throat> sometimes you say, release uh, your madness. BitNation is a good example. Or get, uh, let loose your uh, fuzziness. This is an intersection of many fields or many stakes. The, tec the uh, technical quality of BitNation is really there, but the real revolution depends on how citizens will uh, deal with it, will take it over. BitNation, the very idea, is a very fast evolving one. It's something that's very fluid, which has its own life. I'm thinking of Cosini and Ide Fix. This is a, a cartoon. This is something that you'll find in BitNation, which lives through this community, which is emerging. I'm very happy to see Amin here with us today on a forum such as NetExplo, which is a sort of middle ground between people who do extraordinary things, who take citizens' initiatives, which are quite admirable, and major actors that could perhaps give power to such initiatives. According to you, can a state, can actually use this type of infrastructure for its own benefit? Or would it be a good thing? Yes, I think states can do it and should do it. But we don't really have the choice, do we? It's something that exists, the development of this thing, which may be quite challenging, is something that will remain present. This type of initiative will probably 
become more numerous, there will be more initiatives of the same kind. It asks deep questions about our identities. All of us have multiple identities. We have predefined identities that were predefined that depended on the circumstances where we were born. And what Bit Nation tells us is that we could reconstruct our identity after a deconstruction phase so as to create a community based on values which could be very good values in terms of creativity so that we can find original uh, solutions to challenges in the world. Nations and countries that you demo this to, how do they react? Uh, it depends, I guess, on the nation. Um, in particular, the Estonian government was quite fond of the idea. Um, so we partnered up with them to allow their citizens using their e-residency card to use the system for public notary. Um, notarization of documents typically goes through law jurisdictions and it costs a lot of money to do. Um, but going through a public notary that can be verified uh, through the blockchain, you've reduced that cost by extreme amounts. And this is another concept that hasn't been done before. I mean, people needed to file documents in London or something like that, and they used our notary. And they said, you know, we, we were amazed how quickly we could do this. Um, so yeah, that's one aspect. It depends on the government and how they foresee the future. Um, we've had interest from uh, London um, and a few other places as well, and United Nations as well. Um, had a ch conversation with Suzanne, the original founder of Bid Nation. Um, yeah, so it's, it's quite interesting. Another thing that you got to also consider is like what gives an ID its uh, validation. Um, you know, a passport is valid until it expires, but I'm still the same person. But somehow I'm not accepted. You know, I'm still the guy in the photo. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still the same age. I'm still the same name. But as soon as it's expired, oh, this is not valid anymore. Um, so you got to really, you know, think about how these concepts came about. And just lastly, just while I put it out there, um, with the Bitcoin addresses, um, you can also understand that as a refugee, you can post your Bitcoin address anywhere on the web and people can send you money directly without going through a third party, without going through anything else. Um, they'll have the money within, you know, half an hour and they can go and spend it. Um, these are things that really have to be put into, you know, you have to really consider it. Decentralization, you just can't, you know, centralization can, can just, just cannot compete with it. I have one technical question. Can the blockchain, as we know, as we know it today, um, really, you know, does it have enough bandwidth to be used for these kinds of, uh, of uses in a massive way? Uh, th this is very interesting because you got to think, with internet in 1990 being able to host all the applications that we have nope. today? No. Um, as the use, you know, gradually builds up, the network adapts to it, and a lot of people foresee the future based on, you know, the current circumstances. But you need to see past that and see, okay, um, when hard drives first came out, I remember having a 100 megabyte hard drive, you know, and like, you would laugh at that. I have more than that on my... You're, you're a young guy. I should tell you how, <laughs> how, how small my first hard drive was. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so as the network picks up and more people, you know, um, participate in the network and use the technology, obviously you're going to have acceleration of the pace and, you know, the growth of that. Um, so in, in this current form, no, it can't uh, replace the existing one. But obviously, as things grow, um, people will work on this and adapt it. Just, yeah. Jean-Philippe Barbero, on voit bien qu'on est face à un bloc technologique. Yes, this is a major technological block. We are still not capable of seeing how rich the scope of applications will be. It's as if we had developed a new internet, not an internet of data, but an internet of software. Well, Julien Lévy said that technology made it possible to make available uh, things for new users, but what really is determinant is how individuals and societies uh, will uh, take things up. This is the beginning of something that will certainly have major implications in everyday applications, I think be it in our days, in our daily life as citizens, or beyond that. It's very difficult to assess the impact. We'll have to wait a few years before we are able to see how what could even count as a new philosophy, how far it will go. What is really interesting about BitNation is that this initiative is very productive. It doesn't break anything. They take uh, things that 
were already broken down, including uh, things such as identity on the basis of what already exists. They tried to uh, create something meaningful that would help people who are in difficult circumstances uh, to help them to help respond to legitimate needs. And I think this is one of the major qualities of this project, the ability to do some remedial corrective action when things are broken down. So <clears throat> we're not enthusiastic uh, at this time. We think of future impact. Yes, definitely. One of the strong points, one of the strengths of Fit Nation is that it is something that will be constructed through the implication of the relevant community. There's a sort of activist dimension in the action of blockchain, bitchain developers. So far, predictions have shown to become true, but as uh, uh, Amin uh, said, yes, uh, things will evolve, as was the case with uh, low throughput, high throughput, etc. When I started my career, we used epidemiological models, Rogers models, and, uh, early periods, <coughs> late period, etc. Now in modeling, we no longer use epidemiological models. Now uh, we use models that come from the sector of avalanche studies. And this, we are fully in the tipping point concept. Something is being, is developing, is emerging in front of us. And I think it's quite legitimate to find this absolutely marvelous. I think we need to have this amazement. Congratulations. I don't even know where to start. Let's go. Let's go have an award. <laughs> Thank you. La statuette. The award Look at these guys. Uh -huh. Bravo. Give him give him a smile. All of you. Oh, uh, you guys are good. I still have to work. Voilà. Congratulations. See you later this afternoon on stage again. Merci, messieurs. Prenez vos micros. Um. <clears throat> Something uh, happens that never happened before. We're early, so this is panicky. What do we do? We're ahead of, of schedule. Well, to recover a bit, we have some breaking news. Siri could save your life. Roman, a four-year-old boy from South London, saved his mother's life by using her thumb to unlock her iPhone and asking Siri to call the emergency services. Roman told the operator he thought his mom was dead and described her state. Paramedics arrived soon and uh, performed first aid.